Hello, welcome back. Today I'm working on a still BR800 backpack blower. Gonna be doing an engine replacement on this unit. This unit was brought in a few weeks ago and the fan nut loosened up and the fan spun on the crankshaft, damaging the crank and the fan itself. Still went ahead and decided to send us a short block. And as of late, as you see behind me, I've got a few of them piled up. I've been doing quite a few of these lately. So I figured this was a good chance to go ahead and do a video for you guys and uh, I can show you exactly how to replace one of these. So I'll set up a couple different camera angles and do my best to capture all the little details of it. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll start tearing this thing down from the outside real quick. I gotta take off the top cover I'll take the recoil off and then I'll take the uh, air cleaner cover off of course and then the engine cover four screws that hold the engine cover itself two on the top and then there's two on the bottom Pull that and get all this stuff out of my way. All right, now, I've stayed, like I stated in one of my other videos, too, I like to work on these blowers on their back. It just makes it so much easier for me anyway, and it just, I don't know, just kind of a preference thing, but any way you want to do it. So let me go ahead and I'll set the camera up in an aerial view and I'll put this thing on its back. All right, got you up above here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this fuel system first. I like to remove these fuel systems all in one shot. I don't like to mess with the fuel lines, breaking them all apart. And then I got fuel running all over the place. So I just go ahead and remove it all in one shot. So let me show you. First, I'll take the two screws off the bottom of the gas tank. And there's one here that you need to remove on the engine. Then on this black housing, there's two screws. One on the top, one on the bottom. Next, I'm gonna take this data port off of here. And then I'm gonna take the wires off the coil. Now I can pull this harness. It's in these little slots here. I can pull this thing out of the way. And just set that aside there. And then next what I'll do Let's take the bolts out of the carburetor. Then I'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, tube here. And then I'll flip this over and I'll disconnect the throttle cable. Now I can get this entire harness out of my way. And then I can go ahead and take the fuel system off. That way I keep it all in one shot and I don't have to mess with it and I don't have fuel spilling all over the place, that type of thing. Okay, so now that the fuel system's out of the way, I'll go ahead and undo the coil wire and take it out of its little holders here. And then I'll take this white plastic cover off. And there's only one screw that holds that on. Get that out of the way. Now I'll go ahead and start undoing the volute itself. Now the nice thing about the BR800 versus the BR600s, with the BR6 and 700s, you have to take the whole blower off of the frame itself and then split the volute that way to gain access. They changed that design now with the BR800 that you don't have to do that anymore. And all the screws are on this side of the volute. So basically you just leave half of the frame or half of the volute on the frame itself so you just undo the screws that you see on this side and then you take the whole engine off and it makes it a little simpler. So I'll take this bottom mount off first. And then next I can start taking all of the screws off the volute. Now with this last screw right here, this is actually a bolt with a nut. So you're going to want to make sure you hold that nut on the bottom, keep it from falling out. So just be aware there is a nut and they do like to fall out. Now I can go ahead and split this volute. There we go. So now I can get the tube out of the way. And as you see, the fan came off. So let me get this frame out of the way. So as you can see on the fan right here, it's cracked. You can see this metal piece is cracked. 
and then the nut's got a little bit of damage to it from where it loosened up and it was spinning on there. And then what that does is you can, if you can see the threads on the crankshaft there, it damaged that crankshaft. So now I'll go ahead and crack these four motor mount bolts loose. A lot of times you have to do this by hand because they're, they're usually extremely tight. I'll just leave those in there and just take the housing off and just set it aside. Now what I'll do is I'll take the muffler off. I'm just going to do a quick inspection on this muffler. As in my uh, BR800 Common Problems video, these mufflers, they will start to crack on this bottom mount first. So you always want to make sure you inspect these to make sure that they're not cracking. And this one's fine right now. Next, I'll take the coil off. Set that aside. Now I got to take the intake off next. So it's just a screwdriver and a little clamp here. Just go ahead and loosen that up. Sometimes they want to come off real easy and sometimes they don't. Usually you have to get a screwdriver and just kind of work it. There we go. Just pop that off all in one assembly. All right, next I'm gonna take this tube off here. What I like to do with these is because these are prone to cracking very easily down here at the engine. So what I'll do is I'll just take my torch and just lightly put a little heat to it. Not too much, just to warm it up. And just give it a twist and make sure it's moving. And then just get a screwdriver or something and get up under it and just pull it right off. That way you just want to make sure it doesn't split on you. All right, next I'll go ahead and take the flywheel off. I don't really use a special puller on these. You can if you want to. Basically, if you just give it a light tap on it, it'll pop it right off. Just like that. You don't have to hit it very hard at all and it doesn't damage it. So there is the bare short block, the old one. There's a better view of the crank. See it there. So now this will go in a box and be held for warranty purposes for still in case they recall it or they want to see it and we send it back to them. So let me get the new one. Let me clean up reset here and I'll uh, get the new one on. We'll start putting that back together. Okay, got my brand new short block here. Ready to go, nice and clean. First thing I'll do is I'll put the flywheel back on it. Now the flywheel has a key cast into it. So you wanna make sure that that keyway lines up with the groove on the crankshaft. So just get them lined up, and if you spin it, you'll feel it set into place. So if, if it's not lining up, when you, you spin this thing, it'll seat in, you'll feel it, it'll lock in. So make sure that that thing is seated good before you put the nut on and tighten it down. Get your nut started by hand, don't just go in there and hammer away with <laughs> the tools. I just give them a quick little, couple quick little ugga duggas. You don't have to go crazy. You don't need to worry specifically on torque specs with it. Next, I'll go ahead and throw this intake back on. Now this intake is kind of an oval shape and so is the boot itself. So you'll feel it where it kind of wants to sit where it was originally. So I'll put it right there, just make sure it's pushed on. 
and then just tighten this clamp back up. And these clamps basically just bottom out so that you really can't over tighten them. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put the pulse tube back on. And I'm going to do the same thing since it, it's really cold in here this morning. It's already cold and a little bit stiff. I'm just going to put a little bit of heat to it. And then I'll go ahead and slide that on. Okay, that's ready to go. Next, I'll go ahead and put the coil on. I just do the old school spark plug box gap trick. Now, one thing with these, usually what I will do with these, because this short block is new, now these blocks are not drilled, they're drilled, but they're not tapped for like a normal bolt. They are these coarse thread bolts that basically cut their own threads. So I will put just a little bit of lube on there. It does help it as it's cutting into the block. So you wanna be careful with these not to go too crazy when they bottom out and put too much torque into them because you don't wanna snap one of these off in the block because man, it makes it a nightmare trying to get them out. I've, I've done it before. Now, I'm not giving this thing very much torque. I'm just lightly running them in until they bottom out. And then wherever my T-handle is. And then I'll just go ahead and give this just a little snug by hand just so I can feel it. I know I got a good gap here. Pop that out and that's done. I'll just go ahead and spin it, make sure it's not hitting. Next, I'll go ahead and throw the muffler on it. Short block does come with a new gasket. Just gonna set that gasket in place. Just line up your holes. I like to get all three of them started first before I start tightening them up. And I'm just gonna make sure that the gasket's in place before I finish it off. So now all three of them are started. And that's all you need for the muffler, that's good to go. All right, so that's it for the short block. It's ready to put back on. So now I'm just gonna flip it over. And I'll set this right on top of it. Make sure it's seated. And again, same thing. These are not like regular bolts. These will cut their own threads as you tighten them. So as you tighten these things down with the impact, it's gonna sound like you're stripping them out almost because they're really tight because they're cutting their own threads. So keep that in mind. So again, I'll just give it just a little bit of, just this, this is just a little penetrating oil. Doesn't have to be much, just a tiny bit, it helps. And I like to get these, all of them started first, one at a time. Now that I know they're all started, I can go ahead and start tightening them. And you can hear how tight it is as it tightens up. It almost sounds like it's stripping, but that's just the way they are. So now that the short block is mounted, now I can go ahead and put the fan on. So I've got a brand new fan. And I've got a nut. You can put a little Loctite on these. If you do, I just recommend the blue Loctite. Don't use red. I'll just put a tiny, tiny bit on there. And then I'll go ahead and tighten this down. And that's all it needs. All right, now that that's tight, now I can go ahead and get the frame back up here again. Take the frame, lay it on its back. 
And what I'll do is I'll put get the tube. And then usually what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of lube on that O-ring. Just so these things spin nice and freely. I'll put the tube back on. Slide that in there. Now I'll go ahead and I'll just put the other half of the housing right over. I'll just double check and make sure it looks like it's seated all the way around it first. Make sure the tube's in there in the right position and it's moving. Okay, now I'll go ahead and put all the screws on. I'll just put the screws in the holes first. And then don't forget this last one here is a bolt. And I think the nut fell out on me. Maybe not. Nope, stayed in there. A lot of times that nut will fall out of the housing, so just make sure that it's in there. Just double check your tube, make sure it's moving freely. All right, that's it for that. Now I can go ahead and put this lower mount on. So you just slide it in on the frame first at the bottom and then it just slides over this post on the volute and then put your two screws in. And these are the bigger ones, the more of the coarse ones. And you don't want to over torque these too much because it will bust that, uh, the post that's in the volute itself, it will break that thing out if you're not careful. All right, next I'll put this white engine cover on. Just slide that in place. And then you can put the coil wire into its little holder here. And now this screw up here in this upper corner is this one here. It's a little bit bigger screw than these here. As you can see, a little bit different, a little more coarse, a little bit of a flatter head on it as well. So keep that in mind for this one up here. Okay, now that that's on, I can go ahead and start putting my fuel system back together. But first, I'm gonna put my throttle over here just roughly put it in here, just somewhere in position. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. It doesn't matter. Just so it's close. And I'll just take the wiring and I'll just kind of set it off to the side right here until I get the gas tank. I'm just gonna blow this off real quick. It's a good time to inspect everything too while you're in here. You know, check your carburetor shaft and your primer, your fuel lines. Uh, a lot of times, sometimes with these still fuel lines, they will crack down here and they will start leaking. You just want to double check everything, make sure everything's okay. The tank vents, of course, on these things just before you put it back together again. So I'll just go ahead and set the tank in place here. Just make sure your fuel lines are pushed into their holders here. And let me show you up close here. This is how the fuel line should be in the holder. Next, I'll take my throttle cable and hook it back up. I'll hook it up to the carburetor first and then slide it down and then just put it into the little holder. Now just make sure your fuel lines are out of the way. And then I'm gonna hook up the pulse tube here on the bottom. And then you can just slide the carburetor in place and then just kind of set it over the post where the two screws go. And it'll kind of just stay there. And now you can take your throttle cable and push it into the housing. Now I'll go ahead and screw the gas tank back on. And now what I like to do with the wiring here is I like to work backwards. So I'll go ahead and I'll put the data port, I'll screw that back on first. 
Now this screw is the little small one, it's a T20. To do this whole job, you only need a T20 and a T27. Next, I'll just go ahead and feed this wiring harness into its holders here. Now it's in place all along the air cleaner box here and all the way down. Now I'll go ahead and put this on. Now this bolt down here that goes through this ground cable, this is a regular bolt with threads. So go ahead and put this in first. Snug that down. And then if you just take a little screwdriver, all this wiring will go into these little slots here. These little grooves, you just push them in there. And around here as well. Get them in the groove and then you can go ahead and plug this one back into the coil. And that's tight and that's done. So all that's set. So now I'll go ahead, put the bolts back in the carburetor. Now what you can do is if you, if you don't feel them lining up, you can just twist this intake a little bit to get them started. And once you get them both started, just snug them up. You don't have to tighten them too tight. And then put your two screws on the top and the bottom of this black housing. And that's it for the intake, simple. Gas tank's on, that's all done. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a spark plug in it real quick. Next, I'll go ahead and put the engine housing back on it, the cover. I'm just gonna double check everything visually, make sure I got everything, I'm not forgetting anything. And then, as I've stated with a lot of other steel products, you wanna just make sure that all of these little spacers are in the plastic housing before you put it on. Just make sure that thing's seated. Then put your four screws back in. Now I'll put the recoil back on. I'm just gonna check this thing. And I like to blow them out. Usually here in Arizona, these things get completely impacted with dirt and dust. What I like to do as well is just give it a little bit of light lube, light penetrating oil. Next, I'll stand it back up. Make sure it's got fuel in it. All right, next we'll do a test fire on it. Just turn the choke on. Make sure the throttle's working. Sounds okay, that white smoke that you saw, that's pretty normal with a new short block. Now I'm just gonna check this thing over the rest of the way. I really don't know anything else about it. I'm just gonna make sure the filters are good. I know the air filter, as you can see, it was looking like it was getting pretty dirty. It's a lot of dirt inside of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this air filter for them. And then uh, just check everything else out for them. Check the fuel filter and make sure it's good to go for the customer. All right, I got this thing all back together again for the customer. It's good to go. Put a new air filter in it and everything else checked out all right. So it should be good to go. And there's a quick uh, video on how to replace one of these engines on a BR800 backpack blower. Still makes these things really easy to work on and they are nice to work on. Um, you know, all the wiring and the fuel lines, everything follows inside of a channel and goes back together really nice and neat. So they are simple. It's not real a com real complicated job to do. So 
If you need to, take a video or some pictures before you disassemble it. That way you remember what goes where. And, uh, you know, for the most part, you only need a T27 and a T20 to replace one. Um, everything's the same size, so it makes it, makes it really simple to work on. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment down below, or you can email me. You can find my email in the uh, community tab there. So I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.